Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2, and I'm back again with another book review. I just recently finished Nevada Bar's Firestorm, and actually this book is the fourth in the series. <laughs> I, uh, honestly, I should have begun with this particular book because you have more background on Ms. Pigeon, and slight spoiler, and I hate to do this, but Anna is a woman who has dealt with tragedy quite a bit. <coughs> I'll cut it out. Stop barking. You're not helping. <laughs> Sorry. Griffin sometimes interrupts my interviews. Uh, I mean, reviews. It's okay. It's okay. They're not going to hurt us. They're just being a-holes. Don't pay any attention to them. Anyway, um, this one particularly, particularly, sorry, turning Japanese. This takes place in California, and there is this massive conflagration that has uh, broken out, and it's up to Anna to figure out exactly who said it and why there's a murder that occurs, and it's very intriguing. It's one that. From the immediate get-go, it, it holds you and never lets you go. It, it gets you in this vice, and uh, it's very short. And it just You want to keep reading. You want to know what happens next, especially to Anna and, and her friends, uh, the firefighters in this perilous situation that they're in. Um, she talks about the tribes in the, <clears throat> the Arapaho. I forget the other tribe that she speaks of. The ones that are involved in trying to settle the conflagration. But anyway, as I said before, slight spoiler alert before my dog interrupted me. I got sidetracked there for a second. Um, Anna is a woman who is very familiar with tragedy. And I hadn't known this before. I think the other books had mentioned this. Maybe in passing, maybe I missed it. But she had been married before. And uh, her husband died. And very tragically at that, and she is known for, um, oh, come on, she, she is known for weeping on her own time, but not in front of other people, just because she's seen as this uh, stalwart sort of woman who isn't really bothered she is even mentioned that when the fire charred a lot of animals, a lot of poor woodland creatures were just incinerated in the cause of the fire, but it said it's, it's the very nature of fire in and of itself. And she even gives praise to Pele, the fire goddess. I thought, oh, that's interesting. That's very intriguing that they would do that because she says non-denominational prayers for the people who are suffering through just the devastation, destruction, um, the, um, the unabashed um, chaos that fire often brings along with it. And uh, this one was also very exceptionally written and I have to just chalk it up to Nevada to get you involved in a tale that really captures your attention. And of course she figures out why, why this has happened and who committed the murder. And uh, it's very satisfying in the end, especially how she's um, by her friend's side the whole time, even at the, at the very, um, <laughs> at the conclusion. And it's just, it's, it's actually a very touching moment. I almost cried. But um, I'm looking forward to reading the other books. I just started reading um, Boar Lake, which is one of the newer ones. This one, Firestorm. Uh, let me look into the leaflet and see when this was written. Because this is actually one of the shorter ones. Her books are often very short. But that doesn't mean that they're um, by no means any less exciting or uh, entertaining. This was, let's see, 
96. Huh. Oh, wow. She's been riding since 1996? I mean, I didn't even know. I had really not been introduced to Nevada until... <coughs> no, excuse me. Until recently. And I'm glad I was, but... This is yet... And this is, um... Firestorm is her fourth book. And she's written 21 books <laughs> thus far. I'm sure she's written more, including a novel called 33 and a Third, which I have yet to read. But now that I have a library close to home, guess what I'm doing? I, I have a few others. I have Boar Lake, um, The Rope. Uh, oh, I forget the, the other one that I checked out but I have all those and then I saw a book written by Chris Hardwick I thought oh, Chris Hardwick has a book so of course I had to get the book <laughs> and then they had Karen Kingsbury's latest which I will definitely definitely read it's the Baxter family once more in Indiana so that makes me very happy and of course she dedicates all these books the ones that are written in that setting um to actual people, I really haven't seen the the locales that are things like park benches that people have given over to the the fund. She I forget what the fund is for. I don't know if it's for suicide prevention or adoption because I know she's really big into adoption and suicide prevention, and uh, she's very pro life. Um, I'm actually kind of in the middle, <laughs> honestly, because I can go either way, which is interesting. I'm, I am pro-life, but in, in certain cases I would think, eh, no, adoption is probably better. And in the case of third trimester rape, absolutely not. That's just, no, <laughs> that's horrible. And a woman's body is her right. Uh... But this one, it speaks of just uh, homoeroticism and just that whole subculture, counterculture of uh, gay people and lovers' spats. And it's very intriguing. Like I said before, I know I've said this once again, I might sound like a broken record, but the way that she describes the dynamic between people, just the, the psychology involved, it's very relatable and uh, just shows that um, gay people are just like anybody else. I mean, they just happen to be gay, so what? Big deal. <laughs> that makes me sound like a liberal, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, <laughs> actually, I am a moderate. I am right in the center. But, um, my dad would, <laughs> if my parents knew, they would be spinning it in their raves and, you know, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> but, yeah, I, I'm right in the center. I, I consider myself, um, semi-liberal, semi-conservative, right in the center, middle of the road, um, independent. Uh, huh. but, uh, I like to see both sides. I, th I think that's what makes it intriguing. That's what's very interesting about Nevada's book. She is uh, just this wordstress who is able to enchant you and pull you in. She, she does such a good job with her hooks. I mean, they are just sensational, especially this one. This is one of the first ones she did, and, and even, even in that uh, case, when she introduces us to the... Well, we've, we've known Anna for a while, but... I like the fact that she is not afraid to admit that, that Anna herself has some vulnerabilities and she has thoughts that she has to push away sometimes, like a lot of us single women do. And uh, not a lot of books talk about that. Other books try to shy away thinking, oh, yeah, this isn't a problem. Actually, <laughs> it's a, a daily issue that I come up against quite a few times in the day and this I'll say to myself, I don't need to feel this way because um, this too shall pass. And I know that being single is not a bad thing. It's not a, it's not a curse. It's not a disease. I don't 
care what other people say or how society or the media depicts it because they're not right. It's a... Uh, it may not be the easiest thing to live with. It, it may be a little bit more challenging than, say, if you were to have a partner and that kind of arrangement. But um, being single ain't half bad. So, anyhow, it was an, abs oh. an absolutely sensational book, and that's all I have to say. So, until next time, live long, prosper, chapter two. What?